to the world, everyone. We're gonna, how about, I was thinking that this time around we do go to the world. Are you guys uh, I mean, I'm down for that one. You guys down? Morgan, you down for that? We'll do joy to the world. Okay. All right. <laughs> I love that song, Joy to the World, and uh, that is something we all long for, right? We all long, kind of in our souls, for things like joy and hope and peace, and I'm always grateful that Christmas is the representation of all those things, and we can lean into it and draw hope from it. You guys ever, uh, you ever thought about a time in your life where you wanted something desperately, but you couldn't have it, 
And the fact that you couldn't have it made you want it so much more. It made you like more aware that that's what you really wanted and really longed for. I remember when I was a kid, uh, I was home alone with my mom. I'm the baby of the family. I like to call myself the blessing. But as the baby of the family, there was times that I was home with mom by myself uh, because the older kids were at school or off doing something. And so she and I actually had a lot of time together. And I remember one time uh, being home with her and we got, got in a fight about something. I was like five or six years old, something like that. And I got in this argument with my mom. And so I, I looked at her and I said, I'm running away. I'm running away. I threatened her with it. And she looked at me and she goes, so you're going to run away? I said, I'm running away. She goes, well, let me help. And so she took my little hand and we went downstairs to the basement where we kept the suitcases. And she goes, I think this suitcase would be best for you to use. And then we walked back upstairs and we went into my bedroom and she's like, you're going to need a shirt. You're going to need some pants. You need your underoos. Like, this is what you're going to need. And she helped me packed up and I was kind of being brave and defiant through the whole thing. And then she walked me down the hallway to our front door and she walked me out into the front door of the house. And she walked me out, put me on the porch and she said, here you go. Here's your suitcase. I made some food for you and like a brown paper bag. Here it is. And she said, I'm really going to miss you because I liked having you around. But if you're going to run away, that's what you're going to do. And she shut the door. And I remember being like a little kid. I remember thinking, oh, snap, like I'm in trouble now. I thought I wanted to be away from my mom, but now I kind of just want my mom. And so I turned around and I looked at the front door. It had like glass in it. And as, when I turned around, and looked at the front door, I saw my mom and my mom was kind of smiling, but kind of like making a point not to mess with her kind of a thing. And I reached to open the door to go back in and she had locked it and she would not let me back into the house. And so in my little five or six year old brain, I started to panic a little bit. And I thought, what am I gonna do? Like, how do, you, how do you, what am I supposed to do here? And I got an idea. And the idea was this, I, I thought, well, I'll run downstairs to the basement door and I'll go in the basement door and that will show Phyllis. Phyllis needs to be taught a lesson. And when I got that idea, I looked at my mom, and when I looked at my mom, I kind of realized she got the same idea at the same time. And I took off running, and she must have taken off running, and she got downstairs, and right as I was reaching for the basement door to let myself in, my mom locked it. And I looked up at her little eyes were in the window and she was kind of smiling, but now she was really proving a point. And I was flabbergasted. I thought, how in the world did she do this? I, Phyllis, who can, she got out of a chair and she would moan and ache and barely walk across the room. I have no idea how she got down the steps as fast as she did. But when I grabbed for the door and she locked it, I had another idea. And my other idea was if I ran back up through the backyard and got to the back door of the house, I would go in that one, right? Well, when I got that idea, she got that idea. And I took off running and she took off running and I got to the back door and right when I was gonna reach for it to let myself in, she reached and she locked it. And I have no idea how mom got up those steps. I don't know if she levitated. I don't know if the spirit of God transported her. I have no idea how that happened, but somehow she beat me to that door. And when I grabbed for the doorknob, there was mom and she had her eyes glaring at me and she was kind of smirking, but mostly making sure that I knew who ran that house, right? Life kind of does that to us a little bit, doesn't it? It kind of does like mom. When we'll reach for something and life kind of shuts the door and locks it. And when we're reaching for something that we realize that we're missing, that we need, that we want, but now we can't get a hold of it. And so what we'll do is we'll run from door to door and we'll try to get in. And it seems like a lot of times life just keeps locking and keeps locking and keeps locking, but we keep 
running. See, why do we do that? Why do we do that? Are we, are we, you know, not smart? Are we just in a habit? Uh, what, what is it that causes us to run from door to door to door like that? Well, I would say this. The reason we do that is because we have things in our life that we need. We need them for our soul. And we know that if we don't have things like peace and hope and joy, we know if we don't have those needs met in our souls, that no matter what else we have, we'll never be satisfied without that. So we'll run around and we'll reach for like, peace. Man, if I could have a relief from the anxiety that I feel, from the stress of my life, if I could have some entertainment or have some pleasure or have a different set of circumstances. And a lot of times when we reach for that, it locks right as we go for it. Or hope, right? Hope that, that the, the injustices of the world will meet justice one day, that somebody won't let me down. There's gonna be somebody out there that won't let me down. There's gonna be something out there that won't let me down. And so we'll run for it and we'll reach for it. And it seems like it can get shut right in our face or even joy. The, the idea that I could be happy regardless of the circumstances of my life, that there's some kind of like contentment or fullness that can come into my life. And we'll reach, we'll reach for stuff and we'll reach for pleasures or parties or relationships or whatever, but they always leave us a little bit empty. Why do we do that? Because we were created for those parts of our hearts to be filled, to be satisfied, to be made right, to be at, at, at peace in us. Now the Bible says this, the Bible says that we're created that way but then the Bible also says this, the only way for us to have that satisfied, for us to be complete, to, to, be, to be made right, is by being with God, Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. God wants to be with us. We're created to be with God. And when we are with God, that's when our souls are actually satisfied. The Bible says this in the book of Job. Uh, the book of Job is talking about if we're with God and we're in right relationship with God, what would that feel like? What would that be like? And this is what Job says in Job chapter 11. He says this, you will forget your misery when you're right with God, when you're at peace with God. You'll forget your misery. It will be like water flowing away. Your life will be brighter than the noonday. Even darkness will be as bright as morning. Having hope you will, will give you courage and you will be protected and will rest in safety. You will lie down unafraid and many will look to you for help. That's what we want. That's what we're reaching for. That's why we keep running around the house. And the Bible says, right, that's found in God, that's found in Christ. That's where we were created to be, and that's where God wants us to be. But we're away from God. Sin separates us from God, the Bible says. The Bible says that when we're away from God, we're in spiritual darkness, and that human beings are living, we're born into that darkness, and away from Christ, we remain in it. Now to that truth, God says this, that darkness in that darkness, a light dawns. This is Christmas, a light dawns. A child is born, a son is given and light comes to the darkness, see? Because we wanna be away from that darkness. That's why we're always running around looking for something. We wanna be away from it. And we long to have things like peace, hope, and joy. We long to be with the light of Christ, and Christ longs to be with us. That very first Christmas, that silent night, that, that holy night, light dawned. And it dawned for humanity, but it dawns for us. It's God coming to be 
with us because he knows that we need to be with him. The stars are brightly shining It is the light of our dear Savior's birth Only the world in sin and ever suffering Till he So Emmanuel, Emmanuel means God with us. And that's one of the names of Jesus and a part of why we use that word and celebrate that idea so much. But what does God being with us mean to us? Like, why, why is that such a, a big, big deal? Well, if you go back to the book of Isaiah, when Isaiah said, a light has dawned, right, in our darkness, a child has been given, a son has been born. When we look back at that passage, the Bible says this is, this is what that son is like. So what is God like? Well, the Bible uses these descriptors. He's a mighty God. He's a wonderful counselor. He's the prince of peace. He's an everlasting father. That's what Jesus is like. And so Jesus being with us means Emmanuel, God with us, means that God is with us. He's the mighty God and he is with us. He's in our presence. He, he is a, a wonderful counselor, the counselor, the wonderful counselor. God is with us. His wisdom, his goodness is with us. See? The Prince of Peace. That means that the one who brings peace, peace in our relationship between us and God, tranquility in our relationship with God is actually with us. 
And then the everlasting father, the, the strength, the dedication of a perfect father, a father who will not leave us, who will not forsake us, and who will not let us down is with us. I had a great dad, I miss him all the time, and he was a wonderful, wonderful man. He was not a perfect man by a long shot, but he was a dedicated and loving father. And one of the things I remember most about my dad is his whistle. Uh, he could whistle so loud that the whole neighborhood could hear it at once. I can't do it, I have never never was able to learn to do it, but he could, he could, he could go out in our yard and he could whistle and all the kids in the neighborhood would look at me and say, your dad's whistling. And I knew, and they all knew what that meant. We would be like out in the summertime and playing outside. We played a lot of wiffle ball and a lot of kickball in the summertime. And I'd be up the street, you know, a couple blocks, and my dad would step out on the front porch and he would whistle. And when he whistled, all the kids knew. We'd stop, they'd say, dad, Jeff, your dad whistled. And what that meant was that he wanted me home. And so dinner was ready, or he wanted me to help him with a chore, whatever it was, but that whistle, everybody knew, your dad wants you to go home. And my fear sometimes is, is that we think about God that way. And we think of things like Christmas as God kind of leaning over the edge of heaven and whistling, I want you guys home. So stop what you're doing and get yourself up here kind of a thing. And we tend to view God that way. He kind of told us where to go and what to do. And then we have to figure out how to do that. Christmas would actually illustrate the exact opposite. That God isn't whistling saying, you guys get up here with me. But Emmanuel, Christmas, is I'm coming to be with you see. Jesus says something interesting in John chapter 8, verse 12. He says this, he calls himself something. He says, I, Jesus, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus is not looking at us saying, hey, you guys get your act together. Get out of the darkness and get up to the light. I whistled for you. The picture is very different. What he's saying is, I, the light, I'm the light of the world. If you will come out of the darkness, I am right here. I came to bring light to your darkness because I love you and I want to journey with you. Now, when we think about kind of getting from where we're at to where we want to go as like modern people, uh, we think in terms of like a GPS, right? So I follow my GPS, it tells me, you know, in two miles, take this exit, in 400 feet, you're gonna turn here. And we tend to look and say, when I, when I think about getting from here to there, I will just follow this and every twist and turn will be laid out for me. But the Bible would use a different metaphor that would, that would paint a different picture. So the Bible says that Jesus is the light of the world, uh, other places in the Bible, it says that the word of God is a lamp to our feet or a light to our path. So that light is very different than what we're used to. When I light something with a lamp, the lamp casts light, right? There's like a radius that it casts. And I can't see from here to there and know every twist and turn. I really see the next few steps in front of me. Jesus comes to us into our spiritual darkness and he says, listen, I'm the light. I want you to come and be with me and I will guide you, right? I will take these steps with you and I will show you these next steps. I won't preordain all of your life. I, I'm not gonna look and say, that, you know what, just do this, you'll be fine forever, see you in heaven. But I will be with you on the journey. Light in darkness functions that way. It lights up, it casts kind of a light around us. Light also makes us feel safe. If you've ever been like lost in the woods or disoriented in darkness, it's very disconcerting. So what a light does is it shows me, it gives me hope. If I'm in the woods and I don't have anything to light my own way up, 
if I can see the light, I'll go to it because I kind of instinctually know that if I can get to that light, I'll be safe. If I can get to that light, I'll be oriented. Jesus says, well, that's me. And I am the light of the world. And I'm also Emmanuel. I want to be with you. I'm not looking and saying, feel your way and stumble your way to, and finally get a hold of me. I came to be with you. And if you'll come from your darkness and be with me, where you want to be, where you need to be, what you'll find is safety. You'll find a welcome and you'll find guidance for the path of life. And if you'll live kind of within the cast of my light, so to say, I will help you, I will guide you, I will lead you and give you the things that you really need and you really want for the fulfillment of your soul. Christmas is the dawning of that light. When we look at Christmas, we look at Christmas, we see the heart of God. And we see God looking and saying, you need to be with me and I want to be with you. So I will come to you. When you see me, come to me. It's safe here. Your steps are lit here. There's protection and hope here. Take my hand, so to say, and walk with me and I will guide you. You don't have to do that on your own. You don't wanna do it on your own, I don't want you to. I will guide you to the place that you wanna be and that I know you need to be. Christmas is that invitation. Christmas is that illustration, it's the heart of God. I need to be with God, God wants to be with me. Emmanuel, God came to be with us. There in the stillness right from the start Let 
So God came to be with us. He is the light of the world. He is what we want, what we need, what we hope for. But what is he like? What is he like? If I'm in darkness and I can get to the light, so to say, I see the light, I move toward it. Now I'm in the presence of the light. I'm walking with Christ. What is God's heart? What is God's mind? What is that experience like, so to say? The psalmist said something fascinating in Psalms 91, verses 1 and 2. He said this. He said, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge. That word refuge means rest or restoration. So he alone is my refuge and my place of safety. That word safety means fortress or strength, or protection. He is my God, and I trust him. So what the psalmist is saying is this, that in the presence of God, in the shadow of the light, so to say, in the shadow of the Almighty, I am safe there. I live there. I, this is what that's like. He is my rest. I can rest in him. The, the wonderful counselor is who I find in the cast of the light. I can rest in him. And he is the mighty God, the mighty God, the everlasting father. The fortress is who I find. It's what I encounter there in the cast of the light. My mom was a great lady. I miss her a ton. But she is a tough lady, right? She's a tough lady. And she did not mess around, buddy. My, my mom used to say, I don't make threats. <laughs> and if she said she was going to do something, she would do it. I remember one time when I was uh, in high school, my mom wanted me to get a haircut. And I told her, no, I'm not getting a haircut. You can't make me. And she looked at me and she said, if you don't get a haircut, I will come down to your room while you are sleeping and I will cut your hair. And I went right then and got a haircut because I knew that she would actually do that, right? She was a tough lady. You didn't mess with her, especially her family. If you messed with one of her family, she'd kind of rear up and mama bear would come out. And that's a part of who she was. But she was also a wonderful and gentle person, right? She was a wonderful counselor. She, she was a place of safety and a place of rest. She was <clears throat> restful and peaceful and strong and protective all in the same person, right? I knew better than to talk back to my mom, but I also knew that there was no place that felt more right, no place that I felt more loved, and no place that I felt more um, at home than I did when I was in my mom's presence, right? I remember her locking me out of the house but I also remember coming home when I was in college. And I remember coming home, especially at the holidays, and the house would smell like pecan pie and the dinners that she would make. I remember that my room would be ready, right? My dad would turn the furnace on down there for me and the bed would be made and it was, it was a place where I was welcomed. And I remember walking in the door. I cannot remember a time walking in the door that my mom and dad didn't stand up and give me a huge hug and say, welcome home, it's good to see you, right? 
She was a place of safety and strength, but she was also a place of rest and peace and hope. Jesus says this, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Jesus says, come to me. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to me, Emmanuel. I'm with, I'm here, I'm right here. Come to me, light of the world. You're in, you're in darkness, you're unsure, find the light. Come to me. Don't go <clears throat> to all of these other things. Don't go to the earthly things, the worldly things, the things that you've tried a thousand times that don't work. Come to me. Come to the shadow of the Almighty. See, the, the cast of the light of the world. Come to me. And what you'll find there is refuge and safety, strength, all in the same person. And I will alleviate those heavy burdens. I will calm that anxiety. I will restore that weariness because I'm where you're supposed to be. It's right, it's fulfilling, it's, it's home when you're with me. You were created to be with me and that's why I came to be with you. We need peace. We need hope. We need joy. We need it. It's not because we're weak. It's not because it's been a crazy year. It's the way life works because we were created to be with God. And God wants to be with us and he alone can fulfill those things in us. We need that. And God knows that. And he knows that those needs can only be met in Christ, in Christ alone. And so that's why Christ came to be with us, Emmanuel. He's not trying to get away from us. He's not whistling from the edge of heaven. He's not created a great religion where there's all kinds of barriers that you gotta figure out and navigate your way to God. The light of the world showed up on that Christmas night. Heaven rejoiced, a child was given, a son was born, a light dawned. And God wants to be with you. And guys, listen, every human being, every human being is spiritually in the darkness. Some of us are there because we're kind of born there. So the Bible says all have sinned. Everybody's separated from God. And many of us are looking for hope and peace and joy and the avenues that we would usually exercise to kind of numb our hearts or to fill ourselves have been stripped away from us. And we're alone in the darkness, lost, scared, anxious, frustrated, angry. The light, the light that is dawning in your heart right now, the light that's dawning in your mind right now, the hope, the alternative, the could it be true, that's not me talking you into something. That's the loving nature of Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, looking at you, so to say, saying, I'm here. I wanna be with you. I came to be with you. And the only thing missing in our relationship between me and you is you with me. Come home. Come to where it's right, where it's fulfilling. Jesus, of course, was born, but he also gave his life. And through his death on the cross and then his resurrection by his own power, he proved that he was God. So he has the power to be the light, the power of salvation. But he doesn't lord it over you. He didn't come to control you or to give you a bunch of rules and regulations. He uses that as an invitation. And if you've never accepted the purpose of Christmas, 
if you've never asked the forgiveness of your sin, if you've never come in from the darkness to be near the light, Christ right now would invite you to do that. He wants you to do that. This is the whole reason he came, he lived, he taught, he gave his life, he died, and he rose again. Come home. You don't need to be out there in the darkness by yourself. You don't need to be feeling your way through life. There is a light, but you need to be close to that light. Some of us, maybe in a unique way this Christmas, are weary and heavy burdened. Dreams have been crushed. Fears are high. Hopelessness seems like the norm. And in the midst of all that is Christmas. And for thousands of years, people have looked to that dawning of hope. And they've looked and said, hey, even though I'm scared and heavy laden, I will come to Jesus. He came to me. And maybe this year, Christmas for you is a renewal, a renewal of your faith, a renewal of your trust, a renewal of your hope. Drawing close to that light, the closer you get to the lamp, the brighter your field of view. Come on. Be where you were created to be. And some of us have simply wandered. Right? When our rhythms of life are broken, when our normal structures the habits of our sin nature tend to kick back in. Our addictions, our temptations, the things that we would bring into our life, the, the fear, the divisiveness, the accusation. Jesus would say, no, no. In the light, all that's made clear. There's a reason why Christmas has always been a focal point of peace. Because the hope, the idea that God doesn't stay in conflict with us, but he would reach out to us and want to connect to us. We hold on to that with the deepest of passion. So come in. Come in from the edges of the darkness. Come in from the yielding, the, the forgetting of God's love. And take hold of the hand of Christ journey with him in a fresh way. This is Christmas. This is what it's all about. That's why we celebrate it. That's why we celebrate it. There's all kinds of things that Jesus did that we don't stop and celebrate, but Christmas, oh my goodness, that God would love us, that I could be under and within the shadow of the Almighty, that he would protect me, help me, strengthen me, and welcome me home. That great hope the great hope of Emmanuel is the hope that we need, is the hope that we want, and it's the hope that sustains us through all of life's journey. When children play on Christmas Day, when snow is flung, when I feel I haven't had a friend since I was young When I'm feeling tired of myself and everyone Lord, remind me Lord, remind me That the shepherds heard the angels break the silence in the field Wise men found a baby and they could not help but kneel. At the one who heard our weeping came a child in a manger sleeping. Lord, remind me, cause it's Christmas and I want to. Dark is 
as anyone's Lord, remind me Lord, remind me That the shepherds heard the angels break the silence in the field That the wise men found the baby and they could not help the new That the one who heard our weeping Came a child in a manger sleeping Lord, remind me Cause it's Christmas And I want to remember So tell me How he loves me, tell me How he wants me, tell me The story like I've never I'll sing like the angels sing with my whole heart sing to him who's worth a thousand songs and more God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said. Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. That night, there were shepherds staying in their fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. About that time, some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Glory in the highest glory, in the lowest glory, that shines when nothing seems to shine at all. Guys, thank you for joining us for this service. Thanks for taking the time to be with Christ and to focus on Him. And thank you for taking the time to be together as a church family. Right? So we love you. I love you. I miss you terribly. 
And my biggest fear is that you would feel alone. So we set something up to try to help with that. So here it is. You can text the word LIGHT, L-I-G-H-T, to 75787. And if we can pray for you or talk or serve you or help you, we want to do that. So communicate with us, and we'll reach right back. And we'd love to spend a little bit of this Christmas season together. We love you, and Merry Christmas. Yeah. Uh-huh.